All right, we're good to go. 13 minutes in. I'm sorry, everyone. But um, once Monica gets switched over, um, Roberto's here. Okay. Let me. So I'm also admitting, okay. All right. So the first thing that we're going to do, um, Daniel's not here, but he's going to be a permanent member. So um, when he comes, we can, we can kind of get him initiated. Hi, Vivian. Hi. Um, they were having problems recording the Google Meet. So if you see in the chat, there's a link. If anyone, Thank you. if anyone right, tries so to much. come for us for sure. not following OMA, we will point them to this meeting <laughs> um, because we are doing it. Okay. Hi, Vivian. Thanks for bearing with us with the switch to Zoom. Hi, thank you. We are just going to go ahead and get started. Um, so hello again, everyone. And um, this is going to be the first meeting for the Health and Safety Committee, which is basically going to be part organizational meeting and then also part updates on two, um, two things that we have been working on kind of already this semester. Um, not not as a committee, but the committee is kind of going to um, take those up and continue running with them as the semester continues. So the first thing that we kind of have to do is is procedural, and and again, once Daniel gets here, we'll be able to. Um, oh, Daniel's here! What impeccable timing! Okay. Hi, Daniel. How's it going? How are you doing? Hi, sorry. No, no worries. I'm glad that I'm you- so sorry. So, um, yeah, so what we're gonna do first is sort of just procedural so that we can continue the meeting and then vote. Um, so um, vote on vote on the resolution for the, for the Eagle Days specifically. But um, so the first thing that we're gonna do is just establish uh, the four permanent members, myself included, um, and so we can keep going. It's going to be a little formal, but it's just so that we, we know moving forward that we can hold quorum um, or have quorum. I don't know what the right verbiage on that is. Um, so uh, we have myself here, been nominated as chair um, for, by the LSE. And then we also have Violetta, we have Sochi, and we have Daniel, um, who have all um, graciously offered to, to be permanent members. So I would personally like to nominate um, Violetta to be um, vice chair of hey, the committee. Do you need the Zoom link? That's just going to keep, that's going to keep um, happening. I'm so sorry, everyone. <laughs> why would I need the Zoom link? I'm just asking. I'm confused. Oh, I think they, they moved from who?
All right, we're just gonna go ahead and and um, keep keep going. I think Monica will be here any second. I just muted her in the Google Meet, um, but I promise I can't wait to hear from her just so that it's not interfering with this call because um, I have to keep that window open. Anyways, um, so yeah, as I was saying, I would love to nominate Violetta for vice chair of the committee. I don't know if we need seconds. I don't know if that's a process we have to do, but Violetta, would you would you accept that nomination? Yes. Awesome. And then I don't know if I can do two in a row, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it. I'd like to nominate Daniel to be secretary. Daniel, would you would you be do the honor? Sorry. Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll accept that. Thank you very much. Awesome, awesome. And then um, the last thing is um, Sochi, I was um, just going to nominate you to be a permanent member of the committee as well. If you would like to have a role, we can we can have a role. Yeah. Awesome. Great. Okay, so then we're just going to do a roll call of our four um, permanent members, um, just to just to establish that that we're all here. So um, Rachel here, uh, Violetta here, Daniel here, and Sochi here. All right, so we have quorum now, and we can keep going. So now that we have that established, I just want to say hello again. Um, and this committee is going to be um, dealing with issues in the future that are going to need uh, a lot of community input, I would say, um, not more than other committees, but this I, I do I do hope that if there are people who want to who want to come to these meetings in the future, this can be a place for them for them to join. Um, and so what I thought we could do um, in 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 name of that is just kind of go around and introduce ourselves briefly, um, but but just kind of um, who you are, what your connection is to Jones, and and why why you are here tonight. Um, doesn't have to be you know super long or anything, but just something something to share with us. Um, and so I'm actually going to just briefly. I'm Rachel. I am a community rep on the LSC. And um, I am excited for this committee to take up some issues at, at, um, at Jones and also work with other LSCs to just make the student experience um, better overall. Um, and so I think I, we're going to pass it to, to a person when we're finished. So um, I actually will ask Vivian to share. Hi, my name is Vivian Evanoff. Um, I'm a parent of a freshman at Jones. Um, and I was just attending because I'm interested to hear more about what's going on with the Eagle Days. Um, I'll pass it to um, Cassie. Hi, I'm Cassie. Um, I have a freshman as well, Georgia Beal. You want to like scan, scan your kids' classes. <laughs> um, and I'm the chair of the LSC. Um, and yeah, I'm interested in all these issues. We have some students and parents who've been working uh, on like a letter writing campaign to the CPS board and leadership about the Eagle Day. So I wanted to hear what this committee thinks about things. And let's go ahead and pass it to Daniel. Sorry. Hi, uh, my name is Daniel. I'm a junior at Jones. Um, I'm here because of the SRO situation as well as Eagle Days. Both are really pertain to like student health. Um, and I think that's a really big issue. I'm sorry, uh, at Jones. And I think it's something that we need to address. Uh, and I'll pass it on to um, Violetta. Hi, uh, my name is Violetta. I usually go by Violet. I am the newly appointed community rep at Jones. Um, I graduated from Chicago Public Schools. I grew up in the city of Chicago, um, but I currently do not work in CPS and I wish I did. So this is my way of attempting to slide my way back into all the issues that are 
um, very much impacting specifically BIPOC students and youth within the city of Chicago. I'm super interested in like the abolishment of all punitive discipline practices, including SROs. Um, and yeah, I'll pass it to Sochil. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Sochi. I'm a long, long life resident of the Tilson Community 25th Ward. I'm also a CPS graduate. I attended all um, my K-12 education at attending CPS public schools. I'm a community organizer within the Tilson, so I work with um, the IPO 25th Ward and also do some work with um, Tilson Alliance. So I'm here today um, just to um, work alongside with you all and um, support the best interests of students at Jones. Um, Monica, would you like to go on? Yes, now that I've successfully managed to join you all. Hi, um, I'm Monica Lasky and I am the parent of a Jones senior. And um, I was motivated uh, to attend uh, primarily because of the Eagle Days. Although I have to say between the LSC meetings I've attended, snippets of the board meeting that I caught on Zoom, and um, also um, Cassie tuned me into a Facebook Live presentation today led by some CPS high schoolers. It seems like on the mental health and social emotional health front, this committee has its work cut out for it. So Eagle Days was my first concern, but I support everything you're doing towards social and emotional health. And I will pass it to Barb. Hi everyone. Uh, Monica got me involved with all of this and I have a junior at Jones and I applaud everything you guys are doing. I think the mental health issues that it really kind of for me stemmed through what was going on with Eagle Days and the change into Eagle Days uh, really spurred my interest in all of this. And, you know, we've been actively working to try to ensure that we can um, support our, our students while they're at school because we want this to be a good, you know, they need to learn, but we can't sacrifice their mental health to do so. So we're here to support you. And then Roberto. last but not least, Roberto, would you like to share? He said he was logging off, but thank you, Roberto, for, for your advice um, with, with respect to Oma. Um, Daniel's going to help us out with that, um, with the minutes that he is very graciously taking. Thank you, Daniel. Um, so I just have a question. I'm sorry. Uh, before that, I missed anything about um, with like the call, to, um, the opening call, like call to order. Uh, was that they happened? It, it. It didn't quite happen um, because we ha didn't have the members um, nominated and kind of accepted their positions yet. So yeah, 643, Cassie, thank you. That sounds, okay. that sounds great. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, so the next thing that we have to do is kind of, again, procedural, um, but it is going to be the approval of the agenda. Um, and so I'm going to just share in the chat um, the Google Doc link to the the agenda. Um, it was also in the email I sent out um, yesterday morning. Um, and hello, Sunrise JCP, who is that? Oh, I'm so sorry, this is Trinity. Trinity, I hey Trinity, it's good, it's good, um, good to hear you. <laughs> um, hi, and good to see you too. Um, so um, yeah, let's let's just go through um, and and approve this agenda if if that's what we're gonna do. I'm I'm Cassie. I'm like learning how to be. This is a difficult job you have, this chair. <laughs> um, okay, so um, it's just gonna be a yay or nay, yes or no. I think yay is kind of weird. I'm gonna say yes. Um, so approval of this agenda for the January 28th Health and Safety Committee first meeting. Um, Rachel, yes. Uh, Violetta, 
Does yeah. someone have to second? Sorry to interrupt. Like it's like a motion and second. Oh, you're right. You're right. Okay. Motion to uh, um, approve the agenda. I will make that motion. I can second it. All right. So um, voting on approving the agenda. Rachel, yes. Violetta? Yes. Daniel? Yes. And Sochi? Yes. All right. Great. Okay. Thank you for, thank you for that. Um, so the moving on to the next item, we already did that. Okay, moving on to the next item on the agenda is the um, um, the portion that is probably the you know the most most interesting. Um, so we're gonna uh, uh, hear from Monica now about the update on Eagle Days. Monica, if you um, want to share what's going on there. Right. So, um, and I don't know that I have the most up to date, but yes, for people who are not aware, um, the n first and foremost, cutting to the chase, I think everybody saw, I hope, um, Principal Powers email regarding the reconstituted um, Eagle Days, um, which will be a um, shortened C day about 30 minutes in each class um, for about four hours followed by lunch followed by asynchronous time um, and Dr. Powers email for those who didn't see it also um, uh, laid out some guidelines for that time which I think are in keeping with what has been discussed at LSC meetings and other forums as to student and parent preferences for this time. Uh, no quizzes, no grades, no participation points, that kind of thing. So that is a hugely positive step at Jones. Um, and I mean, for purposes of Jones work only, I think accomplishes, you know, 80% of what we want. Um, uh, so yay to everybody who has been, um, I think that happened as a result of advocacy at the LSC meeting and also um, uh, advocacy of parents um, getting involved in an email blast campaign to blast powers and all of the other Jones administrators um, about this, as well as um, a lot of student advocacy. So yay, we've had success on a, on a uh, mental health issue before this committee even convened. Um, I, I, will be interested in people's opinions about what we need to do to make sure that Jones faculty comply with this directive because I've heard from students that there are other directives sometimes issued by Jones faculty by Jones administration that then isn't enforced. I've heard students complaining, for example, about um, the no homework on breaks policy being flouted by faculty members. So we do have to make sure that the administration is on top of the faculty and that that's not allowed to happen. And I think we also just have to hold the administration accountable. I mean, asking Powers to report on this at LSC meetings or maybe even inviting him to the next meeting of this committee to report on this. Um, so that's the Jones side of things. And then as most of you know, um, there is Jones is leading the charge, but uh, enlisting other parents and students at other schools to lobby for similar flexibility across the district. And um, uh, Adrian Zamudio spoke um, very eloquently at yesterday's uh, board meeting directly to the board about that. Also, there will be um, a group of students, um, including uh, uh, Trinity and Denia and Adrian and uh, Yamali, forgive me, I don't know her last name, um, who will be um, having an office hours appointment with the vice president of the CPS board tomorrow, Friday, um, together with myself and Cassie and Julie Dworkin, another parent working on this. So we'll continue to keep up the pressure about that. And um, Cassie very helpfully just put in the chat our um, letter writing campaign. If you haven't already, please post that link to your social media um, and um, forward that link to all of your friends. Ask students need to write those letters, but parents as well to keep up the pressure on the district. And um, Cassie, I don't know if you have the total, but when I checked like, I don't know, 45 minutes ago, 
We had um, just over 250 letters sent in about 48 hours, maybe, maybe 50 hours. So that is really super duper awesome. And I think that, oh, 255, Cassie says. So yeah, so I think that concludes my report on the actions taken to date. Um, I think that hearing like I did even today on that Facebook Live, the mental health issues that students are facing, I think this is one small, easy, no cost, important way for the district to support students. They need to be doing a lot more on social and emotional and mental health, but this is certainly, it's easy and it costs nothing. You don't have to hire a counselor. You don't have to hire not one dollar. So, um, all right. I, I, so I, I, I don't know, Rachel, when you want to open the floor up to, um, you know, comments, suggestions for future actions, questions, et cetera, but that's my report. Thank you so much, Monica. Um, so my only, my, so my question then is, um, well, I guess I, I first want to ask if anyone else has any questions or comments. Uh, I'll just comment uh, on, on Ms. Lasky, Lasky said about uh, holding teachers accountable um, and holding the admin accountable. I have noticed that um, there are times when teachers don't uphold um, principal directives on like the no homework holidays or they'll assign like they'll, they'll find these little loopholes. Um, and so I think it, it really is important to make sure teachers comply and that uh, if they aren't that the principal is holding them to account. That's really good to, to know, Daniel, because I think um, I did in the email I sent out yesterday, which is now, I guess, kind of um, obsolete in a certain sense, um, uh, is the, the draft of the resolution, which um, I was thinking, you know, this committee could could vote on to to show to the LSC at our next um, in our next meeting um, is now maybe maybe we can think about it. Um, I think Roberto was telling me that committees can't actually make resolutions; they can just make recommendations. Um, so that's just that's a that's a word I can change in the document. Um, I don't know, but um, I think yeah, exactly, Monica. I'm wondering if if we can change it to kind of be more focused on um, the faculty side of things and making sure that they're 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 not going to just kind of see it as something on paper but not actually listen to it. Maybe that can be um, the recommendation, the recommendation that we give to the LSC. Um, and there is a link to that Google Doc um, that is the draft. Um, and, and yeah, it's it's basically what what Dr. Power sent out today, um, more or less, um, saying that, that that's what that was what was going to happen. Um, but but maybe we can we can just really reiterate the faculty compliance component. So uh, Cassie says you can vote to make a recommendation on a particular resolution, like vote to send a draft resolution back to the LSC. Okay. Yeah, I think if you guys draft something, then you can pass it along is what you recommend. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, so then what I thought we could do now is, um, yeah, I, I, I did not anticipate the, the email from Powers. So this is, I mean, not that it changes that much, but um, what what we could do is if everyone has, let me actually link the Google Doc for everyone. Um, that's the draft. Um, if if the if the committee wants to, um, I know I'm being a little bit more informal probably than I should, but if if um, I don't know if, I, if people have gotten the chance to take a look at that or or not, but um, we can we can edit this now that we have this update because it did happen, you know, pretty recently. But but we can edit it to kind of reflect uh, reflect the the faculty compliance piece. Um, but I guess what we can vote on now is um, we can vote to make this recommendation. Is that, does that so, sound? So can, I, my suggestion would be just to like reword this to say, um, you know, this resolution um, applauds or endorses and then like basically cut and paste what Power said. 
mm -hmm. uh, like like you know we the LSC uh, uh, in, endorse or applaud or provide our you know put our full support behind, and then basically quote what Dr. Power said, then add to it anything Dr. Powers left out, Rachel, that was in your original draft, because his was pretty good, but I don't know that it was the whole enchilada. Mm -hmm. So just to, just you know to add suggestions about how the time could be used or um, suggestions about how the time can't be used if he wasn't expressed. And I'm not saying he wasn't, but just to make sure there's nothing missing and then just say, you know, the LSC calls on Dr. Powers or, you know, Jones admin to, you know, make these additional clarifications and um, to hold the faculty accountable to, you know, to, you know, so th those would be, so I think with those few changes, um, which we might not have the time on this a meeting to yeah. wordsmith, but I think with sure. those changes, like in spirit at least, um, the committee could could vote. Right, right. Yeah, definitely, Violetta. Um, I'm wondering, so, like I think when we say like hold them accountable, I think that this would be our opportunity to demonstrate how or why. Right, because when you think about grading, um, that is an issue of equity. Like our grading system is inequitable. So I, I'm not sure exactly like the entire atmosphere at Jones and I'm glad that there's two students here to tell us, but um, I have seen schools implement like equity surveys that are taken by students that evaluate their instructors. So like if there's a way to like somehow make that anonymous or just create um, a true accountability form that, because it's impacting students first, right? Like I can't say like it's inequitable. Um, I'm not the student in the classroom. So to then like kind of call teachers out if they aren't following the policies or recommendations um, set in place, not in a way that like ostracizes them, but more so of like, you are not following the recommendations and this is harmful and this is why. Um, but I think that it's better to like have a way to do it as opposed to just saying accountability and leaving it as a blanket statement. I really, I really agree. And I'm so glad that you brought that up. Um, it would be really great to kind of model, um, model that the accountability, accountability that we're looking for from faculty. Um, does anyone else have any thoughts about that? Um, I, I agree wholeheartedly. Um, I do think that we do need to look into some um, restrictions. I believe there are on surveying students, especially as the LSC is a body of student, uh, like the, the admin um, or part of the school, like there are restrictions on, on recording students' um, whatchamacallit, uh, like recording what they say. Because I know at, club, at clubs, uh, we are restricted to what we can record. Um, and gather from students. So just, I would say, look into that a little bit. Yeah, um, sorry, I don't know if I'm allowed to talk or if it's like committee only, okay. Um, yeah, I know SGA made like a feedback form about Eagle Day changes and we sent it out to everyone and um, admin came back to me and was like, you weren't supposed to do that, we have a vetting process. And I was like, sorry, you, I thought you said I could. Anyways, that's a whole other thing. Um, so yeah, I know there is a specific vetting process. Um, I know admin already has SGA preparing to make another student survey about um, the new Eagle Day schedule. So like the thing that they came up with the C day um, smushed into like four and a half hours. If we wanted SGA could implement that extra set of questions saying like, oh, did your teacher abide by the um, like suggestions and guidelines provided by administration that said no homework, no new content. Um, or if we want that to be a separate survey that works too, I just think the student body gets a bunch of surveys um, and I don't want to make them feel over surveyed because then they won't give us responses. Yeah. I definitely think that's um, seems like a really viable path to go and I, I really I'm glad that you mentioned that students are kind of inundated with surveys because yeah, definitely don't want that. Um, but if, it, if there's already one that's in the works um, then it just, it seems like, yeah, adding, um, do you, do you know Trinity when they're planning on rolling out, um, that new survey? Cause I mean, y'all are, y'all are just going to start going back on the 10th, right? To the new Eagle day or like the 
compromise Eagle Day? Yeah, um, yeah, it would be after like a month, about a month. Okay. okay. So then maybe what we could what we could um, uh, add to our our recommendation to the LSC is, um, you know, we're, we recommend working with um, SGA to um, add a question or a couple of questions to that survey that's going to go out. Um, and we can have that be like a, that's not reflected in the right now, but maybe that can be like a way. How do, how do people feel about that? And I guess we can also work on, we can work with SGA on um, what that, what that question or those questions will look like um, in a way that, you know, keeps people anonymous. Cause I know that sometimes when you speak out, it's hard to, it's hard to mask um, your identity, um, if especially if it's like a really bad experience or something like that, you know, teachers find a way to figure out who said that. So we wouldn't want that. Um, okay, great. The, so the question I have now then is, sounds like we're all in agreement of what needs to go into the recommendation, but it's not there yet. Um, so I guess, Cassie, I'm going to ask you just like procedurally, is it okay if we like vote to add and edit the document in this way, but like it's not, we don't have it ready yet. Yeah, I think it's fine. I think you can kind of be like, okay, we want the chair to write up our decisions here. Okay. Okay, great. Because I know that we do not want to have an editing session on the Zoom call right now. <laughs> yeah. um, it's always hard with documents, but I think it's kind of the best way. Like if in your minutes, you know, say like the committee wants the chair to pass uh, okay to the LLC essentially you know good to know that is, I can like write it up fancier I can write it up and we can we can like you know um you so I think the, the way that it works is like I, I edit the google doc and then what we can do is um, members can can add a comment to parts of the document um, I don't even know if, if, or if they can edit it directly. I don't know how it works with these committees. I know with the LSC, the rules are like a little bit more stringent, but, um, but, but yeah, so that's, that's something that, that, that can happen. I have like all of the things that need to be changed listed out here. Um, and so I can send that out and that'll be ready much, much prior to the February 9th or February 6th LSC meeting. I can't remember what the day is. Um, so I'm just going to read Violetta's comment here. Yeah, I mean, maybe another recommendation could be that, like, there's a, a besides the SGA survey, that, like, there's, like, a real examination before they decide to carry this out for fourth quarter, if fourth quarter is remote, you know, mm -hmm. not just automatically go with this for the rest of the year, that they should mm -hmm. really evaluate how, if it works, soul sucking these Wednesdays are. Right. Because this isn't what we want, right? We want, like, Eagle Days reinstated. And right now, this workaround, it seems like the it's Jones administration is saying like, this, come on, this is, this is, this is good enough, right? Because like, our hands are tied, TPS is saying this, and this is not, so we're not done. We're just kind of like, okay, okay. I mean, so they surveyed the teachers and the students, right? And this was the most popular option. So maybe like another specific survey on like, does everyone think that this eight period thing is the best? Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Well, and if I may interject, I think what the issue is, it's really coming from CPS. CPS kind of busted the school for doing the, not following the syn synchronous 240 minutes that they're supposed to be having every single day. So I think this was the administration's attempt to kind of marry, you know, make CPS happy, but make the students happy. So, you know, hopefully with this letter writing campaign, we can start making some strides to make a dent in CPS. My only concern is just they're so focused right now on in, in person class and getting the teachers back in the classroom that I don't know how I think our problem, our biggest obstacle is this just being an obstacle because, you know, it's not a high enough priority because they want everybody back in the classroom, but there's no plan for the high schoolers. So that's where this is really important because nobody is talking about the high schoolers. 
Yeah, it's, I, you know, to the point that this is the most popular option out of the two evils. Um, yeah, so it's like, does this make the students happy? No, I think it just prevents them from, you know, rioting or just you know, burning the school down or never, never logging back on because this is not what this is. It's not. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, and I think what makes this the most popular is my guess because I, I is that um, because it's every class for shorter periods, it makes it far less likely that the day will be able to be used in a substantive, high pressure academic way. I mean, I think I've told you all, I mean, my plan, I'm just calling my daughter out every Wednesday. Right. I am not joking. She shouldn't have to do that. Monica. <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> this meeting is being recorded. It's a public meeting. <laughs> um, yes, and for her mental health, like, thank for you for record. reminding me, Cassie, but her mental health requires this. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. So thank you for the reminder that it's a public meeting. Hello, public. Let them know, you know? Um, um, uh, but I mean, and if I don't call her out because I forget or whatever, then I suggest she not go anyway. This is not a productive use of her time. But anyway, I think for anyone wondering, I think that's why this is the lesser of the two evils because it makes it less likely that anything will happen, which means that if you choose to miss these classes, oh well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do just want to say that there is like a more, maybe like, val not valid, um, um, like maybe more acceptable reason to add, like acceptable to admin. Um, students don't want to have to deal with having to remember like, oh, this Wednesday is an A day and this Wednesday is a B day, because that's what would happen if they did have the four 60 minute periods. That was the only other option, the other evil. Um, and they would also be like back to back, like weird scheduling things would be like an A day, a B day, an A day, another A day, and then it'd be like, it would be imbalanced between classes. So there's also that like weird thing too that students didn't want to deal with. So that could be a reason why um, I think it was 54% of students chose the C day schedule over that AB one, and then 60% of teachers chose the C day schedule over the AB one. I'm just imagining a strike across CPS. That would be, I mean, that, that's a that's one quick way to get to get policy changed. Um, it is confusing. Um, Okay, so what I think we can do now then is I am, well, if someone else wants to make the motion, I don't know if I can make the motion, uh, but basically I'm thinking we, we can make a motion to um, have this document updated with the, the um, amendments that we discussed, um, namely laying out, like Violetta pointed out, naming out, or um, uh, sorry, outlining the accountability that we hope to see from the administration through this additional question um, in, in the SGA, the new SGA um, survey that's gonna go out um, once, the, once the revised Eagle Days um, start up. And just also the, the piece about looking at Dr. Powers' email and saying, you know, we, we are, you know, glad that this is there, but here's what's still not, not quite there. Um, so that is, I guess, does someone would someone like to make a motion to to do that? Oh um, wait, I specifically so it would be just what we've talked about previously already in this meeting, just those edits. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll make a motion to make those edits. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Was that? Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, Barb. Thank Barbara. Thank you. Um, I think the second does need to come from a member. My bad. I'll second. Thank you. But thank you so much. Um, okay, so then the um, just a vote to um, amend the the recommendation to be sent to the LSC in our February meeting um, as discussed. So uh, Rachel is a yes. Violetta? Yeah. Um, uh, Daniel? Uh, yes. And Sochi? Yes. Okay, so that is approved. So we are going to, y'all will be receiving that from me with the, with the edits that we outlined tonight, and we will not have to do it over the Zoom call. Um, okay, so then moving on, 
I just put in a reopening update in here, though. I don't know if anyone else um, has any more. I just am constantly checking to see whether or not there's a strike being called. Um, but I, but for, for, I mean, for those, for the parents who are here, I'm sure you, you know, but the Jones um, LSC did um, unanimously, somehow unanimously, um, vote on a, to, to send a letter to CPS that was kind of in opposition or kind of critical of the reopening plan that, that was already in effect. Jones is one of the 60 something high schools that does have or has had a positive COVID case since January 4th. So the, the case was not difficult to, to make, but um, was, I just, I do wanna say in, in the company of this, this, this group that Dr. Powers is on the reopening task force for, for high schools, um, but he also voted to send the letter to CPS that, that the LSE um, passed and the addendum to that letter, which is in the email I sent. Um, you can check out the, a copy of that. Um, but, but yeah, so that's interesting. I don't really know what to do with that, but that's kind of where in Cassie, do you want to? At the board meeting yesterday, the CPAA, the Chicago Principals and Administrators Association, uh, had Troy LaRavie, uh like presented what principals in general are feeling, and I think about two thirds of them said that they felt they were not ready to reopen. So I think it's actually a, a pretty broad consensus among administrators that they do not feel on top of things right now. So. Yeah, just thought I'd throw that in there for it. That's good. That's good to that's good to know, but it's also kind of terrifying because two thirds is that's a lot. <laughs> um, that's that's a um, so I just saw your message, Monica. Um, that is thank you so much for for joining and for giving an update. Um, and for also just yeah bringing so much to to this. We're 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 gonna get it done. We're gonna get it done, and we're gonna get it done for everyone in the district. We're gonna get those days back, um, but um, yeah, thank you for thank you for coming. So okay, that is my like really brief reopening. But I did want to kind of ask, just offer like a space if anyone has things that they would like for or any comments or questions about reopening that they want the LSE to talk about at our February meeting. Um, and these can be questions related to Joan specifically or just anything that they want to know that, that the Jones LSC might have insight on or like can ask, you know, administration about, um, cause we do get to kind of grill the administration at the meetings if we want. Um, that's kind of, I thought if anyone has anything they wanna, they wanna ask. I'm not sure if this is, um, it's just in general, but again, like super new to Jones community. I'm wondering if there's like an LSC or a BSU at Jones um, to tap into uh, Latino and Black parents to um, make these meetings open and accessible to uh, parents. Uh, I mean, I love all the voices of every of all the parents here too. But um, just from my own experience, attending a selective enrollment high school and not having that option, um, and and also with the reopening plan, right? There's like a, a junction there. If we look at the data of vaccines that are giving are being given out, they are being given to the wealthier areas of our city, and that negatively impacts our BIPOC families. Um, so curious if there's a way that I don't know. I'm open to translating. I'm also like I don't know if there's a PAC, like a parent advisory council in general at Jones. That is something. So I have reached out to a translator who I was connected with at a um, meeting on reopening at Whittier Elementary, which I think is in Pilsen. Um, and thank you, Sochi. Um, and she has not gotten back to me, but I hope that she will because um, we have the money, like we have a budget to pay for that. And that's something that the um, our, the Cassie and the um, Jones I don't know, United for Jones slate ran on is to, is to get the meetings translated. That's also why I really wanted Google Meet to work because Google Meet has the ability to, to translate all, all speech um, into another language. And I just could not get the recording function. So I hope that we like for the, for this committee in particular, I'm hoping in the future we can have that translation option. I know it's like Google translate, so it's not, 
it's not, but I mean, if we, if, yeah. So to, to, to that, I think, um, okay. Um, okay, Monica, bye. Um, thank you. Thank you. Um, so to, to that, uh, Violetta, I, yeah, that is, that is definitely, uh, maybe I'll reach out again or I'll try, I'll try to reach out to raise your hand. Cause I know they probably have connections to translators. Um, but, Daniel, do you want to say something? Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to jump in real quick. Uh, Jones does have um, Black Student Union and it does have ALAS, Association of Latin American Students. Um, but to my knowledge, uh, at least ALAS, I know for sure, it's not really engaged with parents in any meaningful way uh, that much. I don't know about Black Student Union. I, I've known they've had like meetings for students at Jones, like uh, movie nights and, and things of the sort, but uh, nothing of reaching out to parents as well. Um, but yeah, I was also gonna say that like with the um, I saw my e inbox in my school my um, school email inbox that the LSE sent out the um, BLM week um, notification, and I, I was sad to see that it wasn't in Spanish because I knew like the LSE was talking about stuff in Spanish. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, I, we should for sure work towards that. And I know um, I kind of know now why because of the Rachel, you're getting in contact with the translator, right? Yes, um, but the fact that that was not in Spanish, that's, yeah, ah, yeah, that is. I was writing it last night, gonna be honest. <laughs> What's that? That was just me trying to write it this week so that the events would actually be sent out. Right, right. Yeah, no, we need like something systematic. I was yeah. surprised to see even that we, uh, there's just a sign up for some counseling nights that are coming up and like that form for parents to sign up was actually translated and I was like, oh, that's good. That is good. But I, but I was telling, I was talking to Violetta about this. Yeah, um, even that is not, uh, it just, yeah, the, all, all the LSE documents for Jones need to be, to be translated. Um, so that is, yeah, that needs to be way more of a priority. So thank you. Um, Thank you, Violetta, for bringing it, bringing up the translation thing, um, and um, Daniel as well. Uh, Trinity, yeah. Um, so I know, I think we talked about this, and not we, sorry. I heard this somewhere like yesterday. Um, the Jones Counseling Department, they do have a list of like families or parents who requested Spanish translations of their announcements. So maybe tapping into there and asking if we could have that list of emails could be helpful, at least a starter. I know probably not everyone like is on that list, but yeah. That is, I'm going to do that like tomorrow morning. <laughs> I will, um, I will email, I guess I'll, I'll check the Jones website to see who may be best to email. Um, okay. Okay. Good. Um, uh, that or um, Brian Coleman would also work. I would say either of them too, but probably Olga because she's your receptionist. Okay. Yes, and that is another question I have is, um, oh, sorry, did I interrupt someone? There's going to be a counseling report on the LSC, at the LSC this coming time or whatever. So some, I mean, specifically what they're doing in the counseling department we can ask about. Um, but yeah. I just wonder how up to date that list is, um, or if it needs, or how accurate it is. Um, this is also a question I had about internet connectivity that was immediately shut down. Um, but that's something, I mean, yeah. Um, I don't know it, it, if they update that um, every semester or if they update that list of, of um, families who have requested translation services every year. Um, thank you for that email. That's really writing that down. Um, Okay. Can I ask a question on the reopening? Um, in the LSC principals report, Dr. Powers was saying that we have nine students that have come back to Jones from the cluster program. And I was just curious, do we know how many total students are in that program? Like, look, what percentage of the kids came back? It was um, 48 students are in the program, I believe, and um, 18 indicated that they were going to come back, and then nine ended up showing up on the first day. I actually don't even know if they continued throughout um, to, to, to be in attendance for the rest of the week, 
Um, but yeah, so about nine, nine out of 48. Okay. Thank you. And now, I mean, everything is, you know, teachers are saying don't, don't show up. So it's just a, yeah. Um, so, okay. Yeah, we're going to have uh, like the interpretation and translation discussion that we had at the last LSC meeting was like three seconds long. So that's on the uh, agenda again this month so we can really figure it out. So like the Google streaming to Google Meet is sort of and translating the, the captions is sort of like the first attempt. But mm -hmm. really like the issue of engaging yeah. uh, black and brown parents more that is an open question, like both as the LSC and as the school. I think it um, will require some sort of phone banking, I guess, if you want to call it that, in terms of reaching out. Yeah, which I'm like down to do if it came to that. Um, and I think like Daniel mentioned that um, like parents are in, I think that's just like, like historic, like the adultification of black and brown youth, right? It's like very real, especially when you're in a selective enrollment high school, you've like for so long had to learn how to cope and navigate the world by yourself to a certain extent. Um, and so like parents sometimes get lost in that mix. So it, I think it is going to require an extra push from us and just being prepared to like take on that extra lift and not assuming that just because we start translating meetings, parents will show up. Yep, definitely. Definitely. Thank you for thank you for that. I think it's also going to be um, something that's going to take a second to to get rolling, just because the LSC meetings have not been, um, you know, these inclusive spaces, you could say, in the past, and they definitely still aren't um, as much as we want them to be. So it, it it may be like a matter of just kind of we're trying to change the culture of the the like the council at the school, and that in, that that involves like you know, this idea that you don't have to be in the meeting the whole, the whole time. Like you can come for 15 minutes if you want, you can come to just listen to, um, you know, the issue that you, that you are concerned with. Um, and, and hopefully if that is the case, then we can have these three hour meetings, um, you know, and, and people don't feel like they have to be there for the whole thing if they don't want to be, but that if they do show up, um, you know, they are going to be included in that conversation. And now there's, I don't know how teachers do it because I'm like also now reading the chat and I'm just how do y'all feel it? How do you do it? It's like um I love the chat feature. I never turn it off. I tell my kids that they're they're accountable for themselves and yeah. if somebody says something harmful, they need to fill out an accountability form and we're all gonna figure it out together. It's but so stressful though because I want to read it and I'm like, all of y'all are saying these really great things in the chat, and then I'm also like Okay, I'm sorry, I'm just reading Trinity's comment here. Mm -hmm. Issuing failing grades in a pandemic. <sighs> That's not, is that, is that something we want to recommend to the LSC? I'm, I'm honestly asking seriously. <laughs> like, you know, we can ask uh, the counseling department about it or, you know, kind of like we did with reopening where I put together a set of questions that then we, you know, sent to administration to get answers for and then kind of did our own fact finding on it as well. So that could be something that the committee could do, like put, a, put together a set of questions on how students are doing and how do we know. Um, and we could try to get answers. I mean, it's only the 28th, right? And the meeting's not till uh, February 9th. Mm -hmm. So we could try to get some answers from the counseling department ahead of time. Yeah. Um, and that could be helpful. Uh, mm. Yeah. Okay. So it's not something that they could. Um, yeah, I saw that Noble was doing that. And I'll try to look, I can like try to look this up for you guys because I feel like it's in that same document that tells you how many hours you're supposed mm -hmm. to be doing mm -hmm. remote learning guidelines from ISP. And that's yeah that's the jurisdiction thing that's that's true i mean you know we don't have we don't have any power per se to like you know officially change things but i think just even like 
you know, symbolically or not symbolically, but just making recommendations to the admin to like, you know, look into this, you know, if we're just, if we're just the people, especially, you know, um, I mean, the elected who are showing up as members, you know, and kind of pointing our finger and being like, do this, or maybe think about doing this, even though we can't, we can't actually move anything. Um, okay, so that the list of the set of questions, this is actually um, a good uh, transition to the next part of the meeting, which I know it's, it's getting kind of late. So um, I did want to ask if, you know, for everyone here, um, I just wanted to kind of open open the meeting up. Is there an issue that you want the committee to kind of talk about um, at you know in this semester, um, or you know when we do meet? What what are the things that you wanna you want this committee to kind of to work on? Uh, Daniel speaking. I just want to say. Um, as we are talking about schools reopening, um, whether they happen on our own accord because we want them to or because CPS is forcing us into them, uh, I think a big part of that is going to be uh, SROs. Um, so yeah, I think that's also an issue we need to bring up and that two months from now, basically, well, in March, sorry, um, CPS is going to come out with, <coughs> excuse me, their own um, alternatives to, um, SROs by like um, directive of the uh, of Jaden Chow, so I think that's something we need to start looking into. Uh, I'm just say uh, I've I've started gathering the stuff from the last committee and, and other stuff that we can um, present. I can present to the committee like eventually, like next month at the end or something like that. Thank you, Daniel. Yeah, definitely. Also want to work on that, and by work on it, I mean and the program. Um, is anyone, I, I actually just kind of want to like, I know it may take a second, but I just kind of want to hear from everyone. Uh, even if you don't have anything, I just want like, if there is something, um, you know, I'd love, I'd love to hear. I just want to have everyone have the opportunity. Um, so Trinity, is there anything in particular for you? Um, nothing that hasn't already been brought up, I think. So just like yeah, anything COVID related as well as any um, thing related to SROs. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think any other things that I was thinking might be more focused on like the equity committee. I think that's a different thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't think I have much to add. I do just wanna say though, that um, a lot of the like students that I was working with and organizing with during the LSE election we did base a lot of our organizing based on which parent candidates had expressed um, like certain feelings or tendencies um, about like SROs and having SROs in schools. So just like the whole new wave of parent reps that we have right now is largely due to a lot of students wanting to get rid of SROs um, and because those reps didn't want SROs too. So just, yeah. That's really good. That's really good to to know and to hear. And then Violetta, your comment that like what you said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's um uh Violetta, is there would you like to share? Um I think I'm in a lot of the spaces that I've been in, I'm more like um thinking about like solutions to the uh, never ending cycles that we keep hearing over and over again, which one of which is mental health. I think that we keep saying that students need help navigating mental health and then the conversation just ends there. So I would um, love to be creative in solutions and no longer identifying the problem because we know the problem. So how can we be creative and engage more community stakeholders um, into our public high schools to provide mental health services if that's what's needed or whatever is needed. But I think that I'm just like very invested in putting the actions in place. I just wrote that down. Um, stop identifying the problem. That's, that's yeah. Um, it's, it's I, I find myself I don't know. 
leaning toward that because it is kind of the especially when there are like sometimes the problems like merge into or they, they become like unidentifiable because they've they've combined with other problems um and as as, as like useful as it is to know but, but at this point we just know that you know cps is, is broken like there are people on the north side getting like vaccine drives um for their for their schools and yeah it just there's so many yeah it's like we we know we know what the issue is or issues are um uh Okay, I'm gonna ask, well, actually, does anyone, I don't wanna like call on people. Um, is there anyone who would like to go next? I can go next. Okay, yeah, um, I think um, I'd like to see like this committee working on like, you know, removing SROs from Jones as well, and then maybe seeing what else we can do to like disrupt um, the school to prison pipeline system. And I think um, going to be like I said, um, definitely supporting the need for like more counselors and social workers in these schools. Um, I, I also want to like see, listen to the students and whether that we do like surveys or more um, um, conversations with them on what they want and need. Um, I mainly think this would be helpful for me since like I did not attend Jones. So I think the climate, the school is very different, um, especially for like a selective enrollment. I, I don't have that experience either. So I think um, definitely opportunities for us to facilitate those conversations or get that uh, um, feedback. Thank you, Sochi. And I think um, it's so great to have so many people with like such varying experiences here and hopefully at future meetings. Um, because I think, yeah, having both is like, you can have like the contrast of the selective enrollment experience, which a lot of us ha here have, and, and, you know, CPS non-selective enrollment experience, and see like, what do you get that's better in one? What do you get that's better in another? And how can you like, Get rid of the things that don't work in in both of those. Um, Vivian, um, is there anything you would like the committee to kind of work on besides? I know you're here to to hear about the update to Eagle Days. Yeah, I mean, I think I, it mostly just continuing what you guys are already working on. With um, I, I do strongly feel that mental health is needs to be addressed, um, and uh, you know, not just pandemic related, but just in general, the, you know, the, the demands of high school. We're, we're still, you know, as, as a parent of a freshman, she, she, she's still never been in the school. <laughs> so um, it's, uh, yeah, like I'm, I'm sure it'll be another adjustment once you can finally actually go to school. Um, so, and, you know, I think that the social part of it is really hard starting high school remotely that you know a lot of a lot of her closest friends from elementary school went to a different school so she's you know she chose jones because she felt like this is the place for me but you know now she's remote <laughs> so um so yeah so that's mostly it i am gonna have to run though because i have another meeting for my son's elementary school um so oh, um but yeah so um uh, oh, thanks for having me <laughs> bye Thank you for coming. Um, and I just wanted to, if Barbara is still um, on the call. I'm here. I'm here. Daniel, you're right. That is so weird that there will be two sets of freshmen in, in school. I just want to applaud you guys. You are just so impressive and I love the passion that you guys have for this. High school's a lot different than when, you know, those of us that are parents went. It's so much harder what all these kids are going through now, I think. And whereas I appreciate what CPS tries to do with having a minimum number of, you know, synchronous minutes and synchronous is not even a term that I had heard previously. I, I think you've got to take a step back and see what's really going on with these kids. And so hopefully some of the work that you guys are putting together right now will even spill over back to when things go back in person and in class. Yes, some of the problems will go away, but 
I, I know those of you that have graduated, I mean, you had the high pressure days of high school where, you know, every single grade and every single test was such a big deal. So keep it up and just know that we as parents are here to support you and to try to make this all, you know, as successful as possible. But, you know, the mental health of the kids is, is really crucial. The equity that you all are working towards is also really crucial. And you just gotta keep fighting the good fight. And so thank you. And please let us know how we can help and support you. Thank you so much, Barbara. And also like, I don't know, I don't wanna speak for anyone, but I'm just so glad that parents are, you know, concerned as well, um, or not, not even concerned, but just like ready to just do whatever, um, whatever needs to be done. Cause it, it yeah, this is gonna be, collective everything is going to be a collective effort um and so cassie is there anything i know you've got a lot you're, you're doing a lot with with uh yeah, I mean, with your job about, um like guest speakers to come like if, if there's a school that's doing something right or that you think could be a model like uh jacqueline smith a, a parent of a freshman could come and speak about like what the counseling department of clemente is doing um and uh, there's a woman who's now a community rep on the Juarez uh, LSC who could talk about, um, so she's like a vice provost at UIC um, and deals with uh, basically making sure that uh, undocumented students can enroll and get financial aid and that sort of stuff. Um, so I think she's a fair amount of knowledge about what is happening in CPS uh, in that way. And so that's something that she could present about as well. Um, or um, uh, yeah, but just like things like that, if there's like other examples. Um, and, you know, so it could be if you if you have someone come and present something like that, and then you can make recommendations like, "Hey, we should actually pursue this as an LSC and bring it to the LSC," then, um, or it could be a way for you to, you know, you write that up and just say, "Here, this is what we should actually be doing." Um, and then you can also, uh, I was kind of thinking it more with the equity committee, but the this committee too can look at the CAWP especially and also the budget, um, and you know, those are like hand in hand uh, and you know what things are missing uh, right now and make recommendations for that um, uh, oh sorry like um, yes yeah, so it's like just like the school improvement plan and it's like here's our goals as a school and here's the ways that we're, we're gonna try to achieve them um, so you write that every two years but then you can update it in between time um, so it'd be good to look at what's in there that's related to health and safety um, and usually there are some goals related to that and if they're not you can we could you know that's something you could recommend to the LSE to put them in um, and then money really like should be when you make your budget it should be like oh these you know we're spending these dollars because we are want to do this so like say you're an elementary school and you want to you know you have this many kids who need reading support or something and you make sure that you have a specific goal about that and then you hire a reading specialist that's how it's supposed to work um so and, you know the same thing can happen uh, at the high school level so um yeah i mean we can like you know the counselor is going to make a report to the full llc but we could also ask the counseling department to send someone to this meeting and have some discussions about you know what really is the overall plan to support student mental health um and you know you can send recommendations on that to the lsc too so it is hard to read the chat and blab at the same time <laughs> and then i feel like everything i say is just i'm like having these thoughts i'm like wow that was such a good thing that 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 person said and then what i say back is like yeah, like I just <laughs> like agreeing and not, not actually coming up with a cogent thought. Um, but the guest speakers, it's such a good idea. I also, when we were campaigning, there was um, 
uh, an event that we held um, that was, I was, I was um, really disappointed to hear from a parent um, who wanted to know more about the SRO issue and felt like um, they, they were not informed about the issue at all. didn't even understand, or it's not that, no, I think that's a wrong characterization. Um, there was just no information, you know, provided by the school about about what even what even the problem was um which i think is like a testament to how like the the you know the norm is that there are going to be cops in schools that is just like it's like oh there's, but then but then you say that to someone and they're like there's a cop in in the school that's like uh what that's that's bizarre um and so i would i would i mean i would personally just like love for there to be a place where there could be discussions that aren't necessarily, um, you know, people coming together and organizing um, and saying like, we all agree with one another, we all have the same value system, but instead is a space to be like, what even is this? Or like, why should we even be taught? Why, why are people even talking about this? Because I, I don't know, I just feel like I, a lot of the time feel like I don't know what's going on. So it would just be nice if that could maybe, I, I that's like one goal that I have. Um, and, and yeah, so, okay. Um, anything else anyone wants to share? I know that it's getting late. Um, yeah, transparency, yes. Black Abolitionist Network, thank you. I'm gonna, writing this down. Um, is there anything else that anyone wants to share? I, I do wanna kind of hold off on scheduling um, scheduling the next meeting, but I'm thinking like once a month, once a month meetings. Um, and, um, you know, since we do, there's like, we, you know, if there's anything that anyone wants to add to the agenda for the next meeting, um, and something that you want to bring up, something that you want to talk about, someone that you want to invite, uh, um, then we can, you can just email, email me and I'll add it. And then we can approve it at the next meeting whenever we do decide on that. But since it is such a small group, um, you know, I figured that can be, I didn't want to like stuff a lot of stuff into one. Um, you already have my email, but like just in case. Um, okay, I think any like final, any final things? I'm sorry, this is like my first, this is my first meeting facilitating so I'm just like am I doing it right <laughs> I don't know um okay cool one thumbs up a couple thumbs up oh thanks thanks all right I just know it's like these things always seem to go on so long but now I get it um okay <laughs> um if we didn't have our little fiasco at the beginning where I couldn't figure out how to record I think we'd probably be doing it right um sorry about the noise okay so any last thoughts, hopes, dreams, fears? No, we're all good. Okay, then I'm going to make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Anyone want a second? I'll second. All right. Do we have to vote on it now or is that? You can say like, seeing no other business, I'll adjourn. That's what, that's what I looked up. So it's okay, okay. not to vote on it as long as you it's don't really have it. And you gave a little moment for anyone mm -hmm. to be like, no, there is more business. The only one last business is just be on the lookout for this draft a recommendation that I'm going to send with the things that we talked about. That like we actually did vote on and we're going to present to the LSC and I will present it as a report, a narrative format report um, at that meeting. So, okay, seeing that there's no other business, I think we can we can say say goodbye for now and just thank you so much for everyone for for joining and and speaking and sharing tonight all right bye everyone